Social science is important is because at the the heart of all of our experiences is that we're all, all social and social science explores human relationships in whatever way so it, our relationships with uh, with the social side of our experience uh, with the government social policy but we're all with other people um, and I think that's why it's important to do the research because each each different research that is uh, being published and being completed uh, gives us a unique insight into that kind of moment in the world and it adds to the base of all the other research that's been before it. My name is Danielle Pearson and I'm a PhD student at the Open University and I became involved in social science through doing a psychology degree at UWE and then I decided that I loved it so I carried on and now I've been at university for eight years. <laughs> My research at the moment uh, is looking at young same-sex couples and how they maintain their long-term relationships. So the way that I'm analysing the data is about how couples are utilising their, their past experiences and the ways that they're utilising their future kind of imaginings and uh, visions in the present. Um, and I talk about couple dynamics, so the way that they feel that they match each other, they're compatible uh, in their present moment, so that, and that, that allows them to see a future with their partner. And then it also that allows them to work at their relationship and the everyday kind of mundane tasks of the division of labour, like doing dishes and that kind of thing. So their relationships working in the present allows them to see a future. But also being able to see a future allows them to get through the tough times in the present, um, overcome conflicts. And in terms of conflicts, couples are using the past to build upon their information about how, what things, the way things work and don't work to make them potentially work better in the present and then in the future as well. So it's about how the past, the present and the future is all interlinked in couples' narratives. The way that I'm doing my research, or the way I've done my research, is utilising interviews. Um, but not just interviews, it's visual methods and diaries and emotion maps. And they have, it's offered me an insight into the couple's worlds, not just the narrative that they're saying in one interview. Same-sex marriage has just been introduced in March. Uh, and so the experiences of same-sex couples in 2014 and 2013 are vastly different from those 20, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago. Um, and I think there are some really interesting kind of differences and experiences that are unique to this, this group. And I'm not just looking at it from a sexuality point of view, but I'm looking at it from an age point of view um, and a generational point of view as well. So you're looking at things like the role of technology, uh, the, in the postmodern world, where there's you know also there's not a lot of job security. Um, some couples are, are thinking about the future, but there's no guarantees of the future because there's no one way to live your life anymore. Whereas you know potentially 50, 60 years ago, people would have been you know get, getting married, having children. There are so many different options available now that uh, it's really interesting to to see the unique experience of these couples and how they are living in a world with lots of possibilities. Because my, my research is actually part funded by Relate. Uh, Relate are a relationship counselling organisation. Hopefully, by looking at how these same-sex couples are making their relationships work and the, the resources that they're drawing on for support um, could in, inform, you know, policy areas such as, you know, couple support, but also relationship education.